Looks like one of our development parts didn't fare too well in testing. I put it on hold for now. You can restart work from the laptop. We're going to have to go back now and make some adjustments in order to get the final numbers looking more like we were expecting from the simulation. All right, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Cone Roger here. Welcome back to Formula One 2017, where apparently our team has let us down. So our cylinder head program has failed. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, wait. Your actions on track are getting noticed. Team sponsor has invested additional funding. Well, that's a new one. That is a new one. So we got more resource points? <laughs> I say very questionably. Um, so under powertrain, this is the one that failed. It will now only cost us 500 to do it again. And we have a thousand again, so I mean, it's not an ideal situation. We still lost points in that, but at least now we're we're already halfway to another one. So I guess we will go ahead and do that one again, and uh, hope they don't screw it up this time. Hey guys, maybe, maybe. Anyway, anyway, let's see. We should be good everywhere else, and we're ready to head. Once I reopen my laptop, head to Coda, Circuit of the Americas, meaning we are we are actually getting pretty long in the tooth for this season. Being that it is near the end of the season, it would be nice to try and close out this season pretty strong for Renault. I mentioned in the previous episode we are not going to be coming back to Renault next season, probably eyeballing a, a higher up the grid team. Uh, so as to be able to really take a team fight for a championship. I have increased the difficulty possibly to the final increment for for now. Uh, that is up to 85. Hopefully that is a, a nice, good, uh, you know, aggressive level. But it would be nice to be able to try and take a, a championship fight next season. I don't, I don't foresee dragging this out to three seasons. I'd probably keep it to two. Uh, but we don't have a lot of time left in this season to, um, I don't know. I would really, really like to try and, and cheat my way uh, up to a podium in this car. I feel like the, the chance is there. All it would take is uh, for some mechanical failures of the top three and... Typically, there's been plenty of those. That's not really been a problem, per se. Uh, so, we'll see what we can do. Coda is an... It's a tough track. I, I already feel like I'm going to struggle a lot with this particular program because it's a very wide track with a ton of connecting turns. And those connecting turns... I, I just I fear that their driving line is going to be very significantly different than mine. So right now my only goal is to just to complete the program with a base score of 425. Um, nothing really higher than that. I'm I'm not 100% sure I'll be able to do that. I'm going to let this Ferrari go. Thank you, sir. And we'll give it a go. I am racing today for the first time in my new office. I had uh, I had moved. I have been moving. Oh, yep, we missed one already. <laughs> yep, been moving for the past week and a half. So if you've noticed uh, a lack of videos here recently, that is why. But not only moving, I also have been building a a new office as well as. As well as a new sim rig, if you will. Uh, previously, I had made one out of just some scrap parts, basically. Uh, oh, missed that one. That's a bummer. Like uh, a scrap old uh, seat out of one of my first 240SXs. That I'm still using that, but uh, this time around, I've made some changes. It still needs work. I'm, I'm not 100% happy with the positioning, but. It's one of those things you gotta you gotta try it first you can't it's hard to like 
imagine the actual body position you'll like until you give it a try actually racing in something. Oh wow, I am getting a lot of on-break on or oversteer. I think it's because I'm just breaking too late into these turns. That's a very awkward line they're trying to lead you around on that turn. Right. I doubt it we've completed the challenge on this lap. Oh, we did. Feels like we would need massive improvement to try and do this, though. First thing I'm noting is the fact I have the pedals not quite positioned right. I think maybe I need to move the whole pedal box down a bit. I'm sorry, I'm not going to... I'm not going to show pictures of it just yet. I'm going to wait till it's a little bit more fleshed out and finished as it's... It's super ugly right now. Ah, oh, that sucked. That sucked. And we were spinning out. <laughs> that was fun. Do I really want to try a third line for this? I, I really highly doubt I'd be able to do the optimal result on this. Seems like unnecessary wear on the car, really. I'm just going to continue this lap and try to get to pit road. But the way I've, I've got everything set up is more in a formula car position than a road car position, meaning my legs are more straight out from me. That's kind of the seating position I'm just used to, uh, driving very low cars like T40 or the MR2s or even the, even the Audi is kind of like that too. I've got my legs, I think, just a little too out forward. Oh, that's that's a difficult pit entry. All right. What what what, what was that? Why was I getting an alarm? What did I do wrong? <laughs> I know it's tempting to focus entirely on the race, but we should put a bit of time aside to run the qualifying sim program. Try to run it before the end of FP3 if you can. I will try that. And um, I'm actually excited to be able to try qualifying this week. What is with the alarm? <laughs> there must be something in the Coda garage that makes that sound or something. I've never heard that sound before. Feet back on the pedals. I think the, the biggest problem I have with the pedals being so high is my feet are going to fall asleep. Now, I'm not sitting nearly as crazily leaned back as as an actual Formula One driver. Those those seats are insane. Your feet are actually almost above your, your belly button in a real F1 car. It's pretty nuts. And your back's way leaned back. This time around, we don't have to worry about sticking to their crazy driving line. Crazy and probably accurate driving line. What? I guess that was the sound of the bottoming out? It sounded like somebody just smacked a metal trash can. Wait, I'm trying to be easy on the tires, but it's saying I'm not. And we're real close on time. Of course, I think as we increase the difficulty, it constantly is increasing the difficulty of these challenges as well. backstretch here, but we're not looking great on tires or time at the moment. And what's going to be real frustrating is having these two cars in front of us. That's... I didn't expect that, me doing a tire wear challenge, that I would be running times near what they are running. Yeah, that's going to be tough. We're not going to be good on time or tire wear this lap. 
Well, we might be good on tire wear. Apparently we do good around that turn. I always wash wide in that turn. Alright, one of them peeled off. I'm going to give the other car a bit of time. And we'll make another go at it here. We need to pick up the pace. We're not hitting our target. We'll need to rerun the program if we don't get the time delta back in the green. Shut your face hole. Try and, I'm just going to try and make some time on the first part of this lap. Worry about the tires later in the lap. Oh, I forgot about the turn completely. Now we're screwed. Very screwed. Tires are awful. Time is awful. <laughs> If I mentioned I don't have a lot of love for this place, because I do not have a lot of love for this place. This is probably... <sighs> it's a tough competition, but I think it's one of TLK's worst designed tracks. The whole mantra, the, the whole attitude of, oh, we're replicating turns from other tracks to try and make one ultimate track, doesn't work. You gotta design your own track you gotta it's gotta have a natural flow they keep trying to glue together turns from other tracks and make some mega ultra track and it just makes a mess and that's what this place feels like it's just, just it feels like a very not cohesive not well executed track design I'm aware. We don't get our time delta back in the green. We'll need to rerun this program. Let's turn in. We're way down on time already. It's going to be really difficult if it's constantly yelling at us for using too much tire. the only way around these turns and we're too slow wow we got some serious issues right now I might have to try and throw a bunch of downforce on the car I'm not sure because as of right now it ain't happening there was not a lot of time left in the session so I couldn't try the tire wear one again but I did make some pretty dramatic changes to the setup and I think we have time to try one flying qualifying lap, so we're going to do that. See what we can do. Oh yeah, plenty of time. Maybe even two laps. I'm sure they're... Oh, that's... Yeah, that's definitely cutting. I'm sure they're saying you didn't have enough time to do four laps, an out lap, and then the three laps of that program. But we'll see what we can do with this one. I put a lot more downforce on the car. Also softened up the suspension quite a bit. Trying to get some turn in on the thing. It does feel better already, actually. Of course, these ultra soft tires make it feel better as well. Looks like we were green in that sector, but we're flirting with not being in this. That is definitely my worst part of the track right there. Gotta get back to the gas better there. That's killing me. Probably chopping that turn too close. Interesting, I'm still gaining time on the straightaway, making me wonder if I still have this thing too trimmed out. And I'm running like Monaco levels of downforce right now. think this is a track that warrants that, however. Can't get it turned in. I had high hopes for this race, and they're quickly fading. No track limits on that? Okay, good to know.
biggest problem I'm having right now is getting the car turned in. Sure, what's causing it? If it's purely the way I'm driving, or if it's something to do with the car. See, we're real good in that sector. It's everywhere from there where we start to struggle. A little bit better exit. Yeah, that gained us some time right there. Super important to have very precise turn-ins here. None of that moving the wheel back and forth stuff like I've been doing. Hard on the tires, but it got it rotated. Felt okay. I think I may have just lost it in that turn. Good lap. We've hit our primary target. Target. Primary target. I don't think we'll be able to hit optimal though. The car had it in it. I just made one mistake in that last turn. The tires are going to be way too far gone to do a third lap here. Give it a few turns and see if it sticks, but I really doubt it. Interesting passing spot there. No, yeah, they're, they're definitely giving it up now. Okay, well, at least we're able to do the the basic level of the program. Looking like it's going to be a tough week, though, for sure. All right, practice number two. I'm going to go out here and do, or try to do, the fuel saving program with our new setup that I actually just made some more changes to, adding more downforce to the front and softening up the front some. It seems like understeer will be our enemy of the week to overcome that. Remember this is fuel saving so shift early, lift early. It's a big old plane. <laughs> this is much too slow apparently. Eighth through here. Okay that's definitely over those orange things is that noise I was hearing. Probably hear a lot of that over the course of the weekend. Alright, we're into the greens. Shifting early. We're pretty far into the greens now. Well, only a tenth on time, actually. That could be a problem. have some fuel to use to try and gain some time if we need it. It'd be great to have an optimal, but really just doesn't seem possible at this point. It's the only place it wants to oversteer is right there. It's hard driving around here in a lower gear because that actually uh, Makes it want to understeer more. That turn is killing me. Okay, you weren't quite good enough that lap. Try again. We had a perfect lap going there, and that turn ruined it. I'm going to have to try and massively back up that braking point to correct that. Seemed like we did okay on fuel that last lap. We were actually real close to optimal. 
Oh, I missed this turn again. Son of a gun. Oh, it's gonna be a very frustrating race. Deep breaths. Calm. Don't worry about it. Suzuka used to be the track I struggled with immensely and uh, always felt off on. This might be the new one. This is the new Suzuka. Hopefully someday we have some kind of revelation here and improve like we have at Suzuka. wrestling this car for most of the lap and I'm not used to this car doing that kind of stuff that's cutting <laughs> it didn't tell me anything oh what a silly silly game yeah that was a better last turn at least a little a little angry the old man in the ear here. Alright, this is the lap. I can feel it. I remember the CERN. The main thing we missed last lap. Much better on time. here. Very wide here. We're okay. Thanks. That was alright. Saved a little bit of time in fuel, I guess, because it's shorter. around this one. There's a lot of time here to be made up by just taking it a little easier on the corner entries and a lot of time lost in overdriving the corner entries. Good example right there. Okay, good fuel saving. Not optimal, but not the worst. Alright, I went ahead and finished up practice on my own, giving me some time to really familiarize myself with the track. I was able to do the race strategy program with optimal results. Was not able to complete at all the tire wear one. That seems to be a very key issue for me, is that if I run the times to run as fast as the other cars, I'm being extremely hard on the tires. Be that as it may, it's time to go to qualifying. Doesn't really matter. We can be as hard on the car as we need. Uh, but even with that, I'm worried we might not make it out of Q2. Hi. Just letting you know that we've had the team's expectations through for the upcoming qualifying session. They are calling for us to be 13th, uh, likely due to our poor performance in the qualifying program, or maybe this to the noted pace of the car here this week. 13th is probably actually a realistic goal. They might be better. We might if I I feel like if I can click together that whole lap. If I can get that whole lap together without screwing up one of the turns, there's a chance we could do it. Okay, it's a very nice clear day out today. Let's go out for Q1. See what we can do. Uh go to track and I'm going to do a flying lap. Let's see what Happens. I feel confident enough of getting out of Q1, no issues. I, I do need to, though, make sure I can... If not first lap, second lap, but this is a very long track, which I believe is making those programs much more difficult uh, in practice. It's a very long track, but also that means that uh, one really hard lap on the car, and your tires are not going to be the same anymore. 
I was able to do two. Like on the second lap of the qualifying program, I was able to get it enough that I could, uh, oh, brake bias actually changed. Um, enough to feel comfortable to do a fast lap. But by the third lap, they were totally done, and I have a feeling the first lap is where they have most of their pace. focus through here. Lost the nose a bit there, but it wasn't too bad. It's actually one section I feel like I'm making up time on the competitors. That is a spot I'm constantly losing time. Turning in too early, I believe. Okay, we'll count on a 138. That's in the neighborhood of where we kind of need to be. Q1, I don't know if we need to be exactly there, but close to it. Feels like we're probably doing two laps here. Oh, it really kicked out on me there. Too late on the brakes, perhaps. Alright. Break nice and early for this last turn. There's not much time to be lost at breaking too early. Oh, that was a 138.9. That's, that's good. I'm happy with that. Um... I might do two just to see how it feels. Ah, it turned in way too early again. Give it a run here and see how it sticks. Not as well, to be honest. Not as well at all. It's gonna be a first lap track. Rain is forecast in just over ten minutes time. Oh what? Rain in 10 minutes? That's unexpected. Okay, well, I guess we're done then. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy enough with the lap. Sitting around Magnuson, and he's been pretty regularly been making it out of Q1. 138.9. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Wasn't a perfect lap. 13th place in Q1. Definitely one of our worst performances in Q1 in some time. I uh, somewhat blame the higher difficulty, but mostly blame I'm just not driving very well here. So let's see what we can do in Q2, probably in the rain. No rainfall yet. We need to go out on track immediately to try and beat the rain. If it is about to, anyway. Oh man, it's already raining. Uh, let me see what it's like. This might be intermediate weather. And AI driver's taking it very easy. You wanna let me go anytime soon? That'd be great. Doesn't feel like slicks weather, that's for sure. What are you at out on? Yeah, he's on intermediates and he's losing it. Okay, all right. It was it was worth a try. Don't crash the car though. Whew. It was worth a try. So you could try and sneak one out there before the track got wet. Wasn't gonna happen though. So out we go on intermediates. Hopefully it doesn't get wetter than this. It was showing that the intermediates were massively in favor currently. Problem is it takes such a long time to go out to do your flying lap here. Conditions can really change. Let's try and feel it out here. Breaks very early. will probably play one way or the other for us, like, it's gonna ensure we don't make it into Q2, 
Or it could be our only hope of getting out of Q2, depending on how the car behaves in the rain versus theirs, and how I behave in the rain versus them. It's most likely only going to make those handling issues that it had even more prominent. That's really tough. This is such a mechanical grip track, too. I mean, there's downforce is important, but you're really pushing the tires to a, a maximum grip level around those S's at high speed. So you just keep turning, okay. No idea what kind of time I'm looking for. Guess I'll compare myself to Rankin up there. Got a 114 split. It's so hard to go out in conditions you've not driven in. A 115 split, so we're looking pretty bad right now, but I feel like on a on another lap I could probably do better. Getting a bit of a feel for it. A bit worrying in that it seems like it's not raining very hard. It seems like it might lift very quickly, just judging by the cloud cover. He's not giving me a drying out call yet, though. A little heavier down here. Your last lap time moved you up into P5. I need more than that, I do believe. Breaking for turn one is treacherous. Good news is we got out of turn one faster. Let's try and stay off of the paint. Which would be very, very slippery in the rain. tell where I run wide on the previous lap because the Delta shoots on the... Oh no. Back to dry shortly. How short is shortly? How much time is left in the session? I don't know. This is all information I could use. good news is, this lap is garbage, <laughs> so I can pit this lap and go in and, and watch the tires and maybe try and get out for one more on drives. I don't think I'll have enough time to do so, though. Probably would have been better off sitting in the garage. I don't think it, it's not dry yet. Certainly not dry yet. It's just getting to the point I think the intermediates are starting to become the unfavorable tire. There's four minutes left. I could have fit there. That will probably go down as a mistake. I wish they would give you your time left all of the session and not just the last four minutes or five minutes of the session. That'd be very handy to know. See if we can gain any time, though. In theory, the track should be getting faster even on intermediates if it's drying out. That's only in theory. Hello, Pylon. What are you out on? Show me your tires! I'm curious. Still an intermediate for Vettel. Pretty sure we're about to get knocked out, though. It's feeling that way. 
me look through here. Let's see. We're not wearing the tires. That's a bad sign. And they're pretty cold. Yep. Oh, it's stopped raining over here. The rears are getting a little warmer, huh? That would mean, uh... That would mean they're starting to wear. Cold is good. We want cold. So it means it's not too dry for these. It's a 1 minute and 40, 54 second lap. There's basically no way we could get out again. Unless they actually change your tires in a hurry, which they won't because they suck. There it is. 12th place, knocked out from Q2. No Q3 for us. Still though, 12th place is okay. It's ahead of our team expectations. Obviously, we're gonna be far, far behind Perez for the race. It's gonna be a very tough weekend for us. It's gonna be a tough race. It's already been a tough weekend, I should say. Um, hopefully the race is in the dry, because I did not like this place in the wet at all. Not that I particularly love in the dry. But, thank you, as always, for watching, and I will see you tomorrow for the race, where we will see what we can scavenge from this very difficult track.